Hey guys, here's a design with me session. I'm going to show you how to use some of the new stuff in the latest release. Let's just create a new scene here, call it Village Street. We're going to use the new street spawner and mess edit brush tools and other things. And we're going to make a longer street here. So I'm going to unlink those, not give it a background image. And let's go ahead and activate this. Now we want to hit the mass edit browser. That's a little blue button. That's going to open up mass edit and we have all of our tabs and whatnot at the top. We're going to go to the tile tab and we're just going to look up the word street. We'll see a bunch of things that match that, but we're looking for the street spawner. Drag it out. And then we pick the style of the street that we want. We want to do like a village street. So we'll pick the village style. And now with Monk's Active Tiles installed, we can click it and have the ability to move it around. And you can see, you can rotate it, zoom in and out, that kind of thing. What I'm looking for is a nice straight street. This is tileable, so it goes on forever. So you can really zoom in and zoom out as much as you like until you get the kind of street orientation that you're looking for. I'm really just interested in the straight part here. Everything else will kind of get covered up by facades and whatnot. I'm going to just set my background lighting just as my preference. I'm going to click it again and just turn it off so um, that street configurator doesn't turn on anymore. Okay, so now we're going to go back into the mass edit browser and we're going to look up facades. I'm going to look up the three X for facades. That's the, the largest ones, meaning there's, there's a bunch of um, buildings linked together. It fills up a lot of space really quickly. You also have two X and one X facades. So you can really kind of put, um, put them in as you like. And I'm just double clicking on them from the browser. Once I get them in, I'm rotating with shift or control. That's different levels of rotation. You can also resize with alt. Not using the brush yet. I'm just going straight with prefabs. Notice I am in the token tab of the browser. And if you hold down shift as you're placing it, it will also let you place it exactly. Now prefabs are great or the facades are great because you can put them in different orientations. You're not going to be able to enter them as players. So you don't need to worry about them landing on squares. So if you want your scene to look a little bit more organic, you just uh, place them in, in kind of weird angles. It's the, the, uh, the buildings you can actually go into that you want to place on specific squares so like this, for example, this armory or this armor shop. We want to snap this to grid. And that'll be the front door. And remember, if you place something down and you want to replace it, just select its control token and hold and press shift D. That's a mass edit function that will let it, you re-engage this preview mode. Okay. I want like a, a guard tower, but I want this wooden guard tower. So we'll put this wooden, wooden tower in there. That's actually two stories. If we engage levels here in a second, we'll be able to manipulate some of these stories. And then this is one of the new towers from the recent release. We're going to put this down also, find its ideal spot. Okay, now we're going to look at putting some yards in. This one happens to be a prefab yard, meaning it's got walls and lights and other things. It's got some overhead tiles. I placed it, now I'm going to hit Shift D and re-engage its preview mode, and then I'm just going to shrink it down with alt. And I'm just going to put this, I just kind of was like, oh, what if I had a tower that had like its own little courtyard surrounding it? That's the idea here. I'm going to open up levels and just bring in the levels now that are, that the prefabs have created just so I can see the different levels on the scene. And one thing I have to do is I have to move this yard so that its background tile is underneath the background of, yeah, of the uh, tower there. So I'm just 
moving it back. I'm moving the background tile, the streets also with it, just so everything moves back together. I could use tile sort to do all the stuff, which I'll show you here in a second too. Now I just want to get this just right underneath that tower. That's good. Here I've got tile sort and I'm just going to grab that staircase and delete it. I don't need it in the, in this particular setup since I've got the courtyard. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We'll go in and test that here in a little bit. Just kind of getting everything generally laid out right now. I'm in my tile tab and I'm going to grab yards again. I did a search for yards. And these are just tiles. I'm not going to use the whole prefabs. I don't need all the walls and everything else. I just want to create some detail underfoot. And I want to make it look like these facades have, you know, yards to them and fences around them and, you know, entry points, things like that. I'll grab some of these different yards and kind of rotate them around so that they sort of look like they're matching the facades that are over them. Again, you can't enter these facades. They're just overhead tiles with some walls. They're just meant to quickly make space. This tile happens to have red in it, so I can use the Token Magic Effects Dungeon Draft recolor uh, thing to make that table white instead of red. Anytime you see red pixels, you can recolor them using the Dungeon Draft uh, macro. It's in my nuts and bolts. So you can see how these yards really quickly kind of not only do they merge with the background and the street kind of textures, but they also just create instant detail without a lot of work. So here you've got like different kinds of masonry and trees and walls and fences and everything else. So it makes it pretty quick work to make a detailed scene. All right, let's look up canopy. Let's grab this one. This already has a bunch of randomization in it. You can um, figure that out by going to edit, but we're going to open up the brush just to show you how this works. So this brush is going to respect whatever randomization we've already coded into that, uh, but it's also going to add a little bit more. So you can see you can set uh, scale and rotation. And uh, when I made this, um, there's even been some more updates to uh, the effects filters and stuff like that. But we just spam these around. They come in as overhead tiles. And what they'll do is when we turn, like when like players can walk underneath them and when you turn the lights down, uh, they will they will occlude the lighting in a really nice way. Now we're going to put some vendors in here. So we just looked up the vendors. We're picking the multi mat one. That means that there's multiple vendors inside of this tile. So we could like place them down and then right click it and change it. It's just an easy way. You don't even need to um, really add it to a brush. If you want to just drop one down and then we're just using shift and control to rotate them alt to resize them and you can see the amount of texture that it adds right in detail just with a, a couple of a couple of clicks okay now we want to pick our trees we're going to pick the autumn color we're going to add them to the brush even though that has a little bit of randomization already configured in it and you can see the settings for the brush and let's just start placing some tree canopies around and see what that does to our scene. We'll put them in some places that we don't think our players are really going to travel, right? So kind of around and behind these facades. But you can see it's already got the autumn color scheme in there. You guys can create your own color schemes. I've got some for Feywild and Summer. But you can see really quickly, again, because it's, you know, this uh, multi-tile is, is already configured. Um, it's got overhead settings and everything else. And now I just wanted to show you this really quick. I've selected them all based on their tag. I happen to have coded these with the tags, so you can use other ways to find them. But I've selected all of them and applied this animation. And so you can see these trees just slightly swaying in the breeze. You don't have to do this. You may decide it's too much performance hit uh, to make your players go through it. But I just wanted to show you that you can you know, animate things also. All right, now we're just... Um, uh, using a, this special macro that just lets us change our roofs. You can just look for roof in nuts and bolts. And we're setting all our roofs to this kind of uh, blue color. 
and we got to drop in some wagons, just to kind of a natural city street thing. Uh, we'll hold down shift and just place some of these wagons kind of haphazardly around these wagons. If you notice, they're all uh, listed as multi and mat. That means that you can uh, generally um, double click or right click or single click them and they'll change. Or if you go to your tile mode and you right click it, you will have uh, multiple options in there. Remember to turn on quick edit mode if you want to manipulate these things. So with one of them, I just wanted to get rid of the canopy. The other one, I just kind of, uh, I think I double clicked it until I got a different canopy just to randomize it a little bit. Now let's put in some street lights. These are also prefabs. Notice I'm in my token tab up above. So these are full prefabs, meaning they have lights and other things typically attached to them. And we'll just kind of put these around strategically. We're going to test with the lights off here in a second, see how they look. This is pretty good. And we're about 10 minutes in. Okay, turn the lights down and see how the lighting is working out so far. Notice that light at the front of the armory isn't kind of this like warm glowing light. So maybe I want to change that. I'll go to my lighting tab and I'll grab uh, one of these uh, lights. And then what I'm going to do is add it to a brush. And in this case, I'm going to turn off spawning mode. I'm going to reset my brush and this will then apply these settings. Keep in mind that is a prefab, that armory. So uh, I need to turn on quick edit mode and then it will allow me to apply those light settings. All right. So I just scan around, see if I need to apply my, my light settings again. And then I want to ask myself, well, let's see. Yeah, let's put another light in over here, another street light. Just kind of finding a spot maybe that's clear of the uh, the artwork there. We'll just put it right there. And we'll go back to our lights. And this time we're going to turn spawning mode back on. And we're just going to add some lighting. You notice it, this is where the roofs come in, the facades. It's nice. They just occlude the lighting. You just kind of put it where you want. And it will illuminate those, those great textures. And help with your players as far as navigation goes. They'll be able to see like what, what's around them when the lights are off. So that's looking pretty good. We have a good daytime and nighttime version of this map. And now let's see. Yeah, let's add some ambient audio. We want in the daytime for there to be sounds of the town and then at night for crickets to be chirping. It's what I generally do. You can do whatever you want. I've got tons of ambient audios and I recommend um, like Michael Gelfi if you're looking for more. Let's put a test token in here. So super important. Once you've kind of built everything, you want to go around and test it because inevitably there will be some things that you've missed. Okay, so we'll go inside of our store and I notice if we turn on quick edit mode and we hit shift F and we look for all the doors in the scene, we can give them all a door sound. So that's another function of mass edit, just pressing shift F. And now you just fixed all your doors in a couple of clicks. Let's keep exploring the rest of the scene. You notice that our, our yard is sitting on top of our, our background to our, our uh, armory. So we're going to use a uh, tile sort and we're just going to quickly grab all of our yards, all those tiles. We're going to move them underneath most of the other tiles because they should be, they should really just be above the street scene because they're all underfoot, right? So that'll get them all out of the way. So whether we made that mistake elsewhere, that'll, that'll fix it for us. I'm noticing this uh, armor store is not really on the grid properly. That might've been a problem when I placed it, but what I'm going to do is just grab its control token and I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to, I'm going to try to adjust it manually, right? I want my, I want my player and all the doors to be like, like, on the grid properly. And by moving the control token, the entire apparatus moves with it, all the walls and everything else. 
Everyone asked me how my players automatically rotate. That's the auto rotate module that does that. And then I noticed that these trees are not occluding or they're covering up some of the interior space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the um, occlusion ID, or I'm going to actually make an occlusion ID for the roof of the armory. And I'm going to apply that same occlusion ID to this tree. And I'm going to set the tree to fade. That way, anytime the roof of the armory occludes, the tree itself will occlude as well, and it won't block anything. That's a levels function. If you don't understand that, check out some of my levels videos or just read up on levels. Um, Ripper's got a great wiki for level support. And there's one other place we're going to want to set occlusion IDs as well, which we'll get to here in just a second. I'm going to delete all the control tokens. This is going to free everything up. I no longer have prefabs on the scene. I just have individual entities. This means I don't have to turn on quick edit mode anymore. It also means those little dots go away. You can't undo it, So, uh, but uh, but it's, it's really convenient. Once you have things generally how you want, super convenient. Now let's test this out. All right, we have a lot of stuff going on over here with this tower. This is great. We can navigate to the top. We can shoot arrows out of it, but we have the same occlusion problem. So we're going to grab the occlusion ID. It was already set for this tower. And we're going to apply that occlusion ID by hitting shift E. That's going to let us edit multiple things at once. We're going to apply it to those canopies. So we applied the occlusion ID, but you can see they're still in the way. So what could be happening? Well, that's because these canopies are not set to occlude when something walks under them. So we're going to hit shift E again. We're going to set our occlusion mode to fade. That's going to make it so that they will fade when the roof of the, uh, the tower fades. Make sense? Hopefully I didn't go too fast through that. You guys can always pause uh, or slow it down. Well, that's it. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful and uh, we'll see you next time.